the moment that the baby girl was born, her mom ended up abandoning her almost immediately. Years later, an adoption that must have been fate gave this orphan a new lease on life and resulted in a special miracle. The young mom shook her head. This could not be her baby girl. When she fell pregnant and later when she was told that it was a girl, she had started dreaming of how beautiful the baby would be. But when the newborn was put in her arms, clearly this was not what she had expected. Two foggy silver eyes stare back at the mom, almost piercing into her soul. That was when she broke down in tears. No amount of persuasion or even motherly instincts could convince the mom to take responsibility for her baby. Doctors told her that there were always possibilities to help the girl live as normal a life as possible, but as soon as the mother was given the green light to go home, she signed some papers to hand her baby over to the state. She must have felt some sorrow in her heart, but her feelings of being overwhelmed and disappointed overshadowed and clouded her judgment. The little girl was named Primrose. An orphanage would become her home for the first five years of her life. Even at this place, which was supposed to be a place of safety, this little innocent girl was treated as a freak of nature. Whenever the other children saw her strange silvery eyes, they would scream and run away. Potential parents coming to adopt children from the orphanage never even considered adopting Primrose. The staff at the orphanage eventually understood that no one would willingly adopt such a strange-looking child. After all, there were plenty of normal-looking children with great potential waiting to find a loving home. The reason for the silvery eyes was something not so unknown by professionals in the medical field. Primrose was diagnosed with congenital glaucoma, a rare condition that affects about 1 in 30,000 children. If left untreated, it could result in complete blindness. As Primrose was just another abandoned orphan, nobody bothered to find resources to treat the girl's eyes. The orphanage had many needs and limited funding. Therefore, trying to save one child's eyes was a lesser priority than feeding and clothing all the other children. Despite moments of compassion, Primrose disappeared into the system. One may have expected this little baby girl to just lie down and accept her fate, but there was something in her that caused her to fight for her rightful place in life. Despite her severe drawbacks in life, Primrose was only looking to be loved and accepted. She also needed the touch and affection of caregivers. Unfortunately, there were so many children to look after, and there was little time to pick up the children, hold and cuddle them. Almost on the other side of the world, in the city of Buffer, Georgia, a happy couple was sitting in front of their fireplace. Chris and Erin Austin, in their early 30s, were enjoying a quiet moment out of their busy lives. Their two kids, 7-year-old Madeline and 5-year-old River, were already put to bed. Both parents were just taking a breather. That evening in 2014, Erin was browsing through her Facebook page when, in a split second, her whole world came to a complete stand. In front of her was a picture of a little girl stuck in an orphanage in China. There was something very unique about this orphan. She had the strangest, most piercing silver eyes. Chris and Erin had always talked about adopting one day. To them, one of the most selfless things they could do was to give an orphan child a loving home. They knew that they had more than enough love for their biological kids, as well as to incorporate a child that had been orphaned or abandoned by their family. Fate was knocking at their door. Later on, Erin could not clearly explain what had happened to her at that moment, but it was as if her heart connected the image of this helpless girl, and in an instant, she knew that this girl was supposed to be their daughter. She showed the picture to her husband, who almost in a similar manner was immediately intrigued by the girl and in complete agreement with his wife. It was decided. They would explore the possibility of adopting this beautiful little girl into their family. Outsiders might have wondered why a family that seemed to have everything going for them would choose to adopt a child with physical impairments, knowing that it would complicate their easygoing lives to a large extent. Adopting a child from a foreign country already adds a sufficient amount of stress and turmoil to the process. However, Chris and Erin were convinced that this was exactly what they had to do. Despite their determination, the process of bureaucratic red tape for American citizens adopting a Chinese orphan was a challenging one, to say the least. First, the couple had to travel to China after making contact with the orphanage. With the help of American lawyers, all the paperwork was drawn up, but the papers had to be signed on Chinese soil. The parents were also thoroughly checked to ensure they had no sinister motives for adopting the child. It took more than two years to finalize all the paperwork. The Austins could finally bring Primrose back home in 2016. All the money they had spent, all the emotional turmoil and all the waiting and fighting was worth it in the end. 
Chris and Aaron were quite realistic about what they were getting themselves into. The orphanage had told them that Primrose was almost certainly completely blind or very near to it. The staff explained that the glaucoma was never treated and that her eyes were enlarged with much cloudiness of the cornea. Primrose's eyes were very sensitive to light. In addition, the staff were almost certain that the little girl was also deaf. When Primrose arrived at her new home, there were some serious challenges facing the family. Erin had already made the decision to be a full-time caregiver for their newly adopted child, but their own children had to adapt to all the attention their new sister needed. Some days were tough. Although Primrose was already five years old, there were many developmental milestones she had not achieved yet. Erin had to teach their girl how to sit up. She had to be fed every meal as she had not developed any skills to eat herself. Most of the time, someone had to hold her head up as these muscles had never developed properly in the orphanage. In all probability, she had been left lying down most of the day. Of all the things the family needed to teach Primrose, accepting any kind of affection was the most heartbreaking. This little girl did not know what it meant to be loved and held. She did not know how to respond to all the unconditional love that was all of a sudden poured out on her by the Austin family. Mom Erin had to guide all of the family members to patiently work their respective ways into Primrose's heart. Introducing the new member of their family to the outside world held its own challenges. Of course, very few of their friends were openly hostile. Most applauded the family for their compassion and selfless deed in adopting a severely challenged orphan from an overseas country, but some friends stopped coming to visit. Although rejection is always hurtful, the Austins knew that their daughter and her well-being would be their future priority. After the initial settling in, the parents knew they had to get their girl to some medical experts to establish a baseline for her health. Although the staff at the orphanage gave them all the information they had on Primrose, the information was mostly given verbally. There was almost no medical paperwork and the Austins thought it necessary to get some expert opinions. The sad part was that when doctors examined her eyes, they were quite certain that early medical intervention could have made a huge difference in Primrose's sight. However, at this late stage, the girl could only sense light. They also determined that she wasn't completely deaf, but she had only a small percentage of hearing. With the best medical technology available, Primrose received laser treatment to reduce the pressure that was building up behind her eyes. Doctors also implanted some tubes into her ears to help her hear a little bit more. Already, her quality of life was improving greatly. During their thorough examination of Primrose, doctors were stunned when they diagnosed a very rare medical condition. Primrose had been born with a 6p25 deletion syndrome. It was this syndrome that had caused a number of congenital abnormalities. In addition to her visual and audio challenges, doctors told her parents that she would have some learning disabilities, limiting her potential to develop to her fullest. Also, she had a lack of muscle tone that would affect her overall ability to move independently. Slowly but surely, the Austin family was adapting to new dynamics in their family life. In August of 2018, almost out of the blue, the chirpy and smiley little girl started behaving differently. It was clear that she wasn't being mischievous, but that she was experiencing some level of discomfort. This progressed to a situation where Primrose was clearly in severe pain. The family realized that the situation had become one of life and death. Primrose had become severely and critically ill. Doctors were equally baffled by what was happening. This pain caused her to start sweating profusely. In addition, she cried for at least 16 hours a day. The once happy girl stopped eating which caused serious distress for her family. The doctor's strategy was to start eliminating any sources of pain one by one. Still, they were no closer to any answer and they had worked through most of the causes they could think of. It was during this intense time that Primrose went through an episode where her whole body was drenched in sweat and the pain was of such intensity that her nervous symptom was going nuts. Her whole body was shaking and she was literally screaming at the top of her lungs. Doctors, but especially her parents, were desperate to find the source of the pain and help the girl find some relief. The sudden and complete change in Primrose had caused some serious disruption to Austin's family life. Before, the family would be active and partake in outdoor activities. Now, with a child in constant pain and mostly lying down, they were severely restricted. One parent always had to stay behind while the other one tended to the other children and accompanied them to their school activities. Any parent would probably be able to relate to the feeling of complete helplessness. They would do anything to take away their child's pain, yet there was little the parents could do to stop the pain. They knew that their beloved daughter needed some urgent medical intervention 
and they hoped and prayed that the doctors could determine what was causing their child to cry so profusely. As Primrose wasn't eating or drinking, liquids had to be forced down her throat with a syringe to keep her hydrated. On day 76 of this crisis, doctors finally had an answer to what was causing this excruciating pain. An MRI scan revealed that for some reason, the pressure behind Primrose's eyes had increased dramatically, especially in one eye. It also seemed like in the most severely affected eye, there was retinal detachment. The other eye had mysteriously dried up to half of its original size. Chris and Aaron were not prepared for what the doctors were about to suggest next. After carefully considering all the options, there seemed to be no way to treat the eyes effectively. The only solution they offered was to remove little Primrose's eyes completely. The initial shock wasn't easy to process. It took the couple a few days to come to grips with their new reality. The longer they took to make the decision, the more their daughter was suffering. On the other hand, if they made the wrong decision, there was no going back. They tried to find some research on the topic, but the information was limited and brought them no closer to a decision. Finally, the couple decided to take a leap of faith and allow the doctors to go ahead with the procedure. In an operation that lasted several hours, doctors had to remove the optic tissue from both eyes. As Erin was waiting for the operation to be done, her world was turned upside down. She knew she could not bear it if anything went wrong. They were now responsible for their third child's life, and they took this responsibility very seriously. Aside from the responsibility, Erin could hardly explain how much she loved this beautiful girl of hers. Despite how everybody else viewed her, to them, she was never ugly and the word monster would never be something they could even vaguely attach to their daughter. When the parents saw their little girl all bandaged up around her eyes, their hearts were broken but they hoped they had done the right thing. It took only two days after the operation for the parents to realize they had made the right decision. After Primrose woke from the operation, she did not cry that much. She had a little bit of a discomfort, but as soon as she heard Erin and Chris's voices, she was immediately calm. It was a great relief to know that the source of her great pain had been removed and that she was doing much better, both physically and emotionally. Two days after the operation, Primrose smiled for the first time in months. She was also ready to start walking again. With the help of her father, Chris, she started practicing using a walking stick. Life in the Austin family was yet again hopeful and joy returned to their lives. Despite the ordeal the family had gone through, it was clear that the happier days were ahead. All of a sudden, the atmosphere in the house was much lighter. Primrose was cooperating with her parents with regard to everything they were trying to teach her. Her siblings were much more relaxed with the constant crying being something of the past. Friends could yet again start visiting the family as things were slowly but surely returning to what was considered the normal of the Austin home. The medical team kept a close eye on Primrose's progress. After the wounds of the operation had healed, they brought her back to the hospital to make molds of the eye sockets. This would be used to develop prosthetic eyes that would be painted to resemble perfectly healthy eyes. The painted shells would include a pupil and a colored iris. The whole story of Primrose being adopted by the Austin family was a miracle. But the miracles just kept on happening. Every little thing that Primrose mastered to do was a miracle. The day that she finally was able to pinch a snack between her forefinger and her thumb was a great day of celebration as this was something she could never do before. Being afraid and not having the ability to see the world around her, Primrose mostly had restless nights, making it a little challenging for her parents to get up several times a night. All of a sudden, she started sleeping through. To many, it might have seemed like nothing special, but to the Austin family who walked this journey, this was yet another miracle. Teaching society what it meant to raise such a special child remained quite a challenge. In a world obsessed with beauty and perfection, a child like Primrose would always fall short of their standard. But this family felt blessed to have the opportunity to teach their daughter that she was worthy and beautiful. When people first met Primrose, they would tell the parents how sorry they were that their girl was blind. It was mostly Chris who addressed the situation. He told them not to feel sorry for the family, as being blind was no reason to feel sorry. All people have daily difficulties to deal with. And with their daughter being blind, it was simply something they dealt with to the best of their ability. Despite some intense feelings about children being abandoned by their parents, Chris and Erin did not want to be judgmental about Primrose's biological parents. They might never fully understand the emotions and circumstances under which this mom had put up her daughter for adoption, but they wanted her to know that her daughter was doing well. They would have loved for that mother to know that her daughter had been adopted into a loving family where she was safe and happy. 
What is your opinion on international adoptions? Do you think it is worth the effort to pursue cross-cultural and cross-continental adoptions? We would love for you to share your thoughts on this captivating story. Also hit the notification bell. You will be the first to know when new stories are released. Thanks for staying till the very end.